If you remember from electrochem, delta G is free energy. And ultimately, it is what decides whether or not a reaction is spontaneous. So while delta H might be the driving force in determining if something is spontaneous, and delta S can be an indicator of whether or not it's spontaneous, delta G is ultimately the factor that determines if something, if a reaction is spontaneous, if it will proceed after activation energy has been reached. If you have a negative delta G, that means the reaction is spontaneous. It will proceed of its own accord. Whereas if you have a positive delta G, it means that it is not. There are several different formulas for finding delta G. You can use what your NIMSY pack refers to as the Big Mama equation, which is just like the Big Mama equation of delta H and delta S. It is the sum of the standard free energy of your products minus the sum of the standard free energy of your reactants. And remember, any time that you have an element, its delta G, its delta H is going to equal zero, as well as its delta G will equal zero. However, delta S for any element is not going to be zero because it still has those electrons flying around it, contributing to the overall entropy of it. You can use the granddaddy formula for delta G, the big, old, the big one. A lot of points are tied into this, so if there's one formula you absolutely should positively know from this unit is definitely delta G equals delta H minus, delta, minus T times delta S, where delta G is the free energy, the delta H is the enthalpy, T is the temperature in kelvins, and delta S is the entropy. You can use Hess's law where they give you several different equations. You just have to figure out which pathway will give you uh, your products and then sum up the delta G's that go with each one. Now remember that the not symbol means that we're at standard conditions, which is 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere. So what happens if we are not at standard conditions? Well. There's a formula for that too. Sorry, I misspoke. Standard conditions are only one atmosphere. Temperature can vary. So, if we are not at standard conditions, if we are not at one atmosphere, there's a different formula for that. No, standard conditions are 298. What am I thinking? Sorry, standard conditions, one atmosphere and 298 Kelvin. If we are not at those standard conditions, we have a separate formula. And for that, it's delta G is going to equal the standard conditions, or the free energy at standard conditions, minus R, T, and the natural log of Q, where delta G naught is the free energy at standard conditions. R is the universal gas constant with a proper units for us, which in this case will be joules per mole Kelvin. So that's 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin in this case. T is obviously temperature, but it's going to be in Kelvin. And Q is the reaction quotient, which remember as we move equilibrium is going to shift. And it's the products rates to their coefficients divided by the reactants rates to their coefficients. At equilibrium, Q equals K, and that's going to rearrange this formula for us. But for right now, this is the formula we're going to use when we're not at standard conditions. In the event that we're talking about gases, the partial pressures of the gases can be used for the concentration of any product or reactant. And remember that, so that pure liquids and solids do not get put into Q, guys. It's only gases that go in. Now at equilibrium Q is going to equal 1 and if you take the natural log of uh, 1 you come out with 0 so therefore free energy at equilibrium is going to be 0 but as we move towards equilibrium we can do a couple other things we can rearrange this formula to find the standard free energy if we are at standard conditions once we're at equilibrium, Q equals K, and K is found the same way as Q. It's the products raised to their coefficients divided by the reactants raised to their coefficients, and that will give us a different value for K. 
and we'll be able to find the standard free energy for uh, a reaction moving towards equilibrium. Remember that once we reach equilibrium though, delta E, sorry, sorry, E naught is going to equal zero because the battery is officially dead then. So we're tying this all back towards electrochemistry. At equilibrium, when you're using this equation here, the cell potential is zero. And lastly, we can tie this back to the Gibbs equation you learned in electrochemistry that the free energy equals the negative of the number of moles times Faraday's a constant times the cell potential. So if we're at equilibrium, we're going to use the rat link. That's how you can remember this, minus rat link. Delta G equals minus rat link. And if we're talking about cell potential and uh, electrochemistry, you can remember it as delta G equals nuff. So let's see a couple of these in action. In sample problem C, we're asked to find the free energy of formation for the oxidation of water produced hydrogen peroxide. And we're given a table. So when every time you're given a table, we're going to divert back to those big mama equations. And it's simply the products minus the reactants. And usually just writing out that formula for your grader is usually a good way to earn at least one point, knowing that this is the formula I've got to use. So if I sub in the values here, I've got 2 times hydrogen peroxide and 2 times water plus oxygen. That gives me this equation here. I can do a little bit of a dance for joy because any element in its elemental form, it's delta G and it's delta F, heat of formation and the free energy of formation are both going to equal zero. So this here, I can just scratch that puppy out. I'm not really going to put any value there because it's going to be zero. Once I plug in my values, do a little bit of math, and I come out with delta G, or the standard heat of formation, is 59.0 kilocalories per mole. It's important that you pay attention to your units here. Notice how I included them in all in both in uh, all of my calculations, because units become a little tricky, which is as, which you'll see in the next couple of problems. So make sure you pay attention to your units and include them in your answer. Here's a problem using Hess's law. We're asked to find the standard free energy for diamonds becoming graphite. So we've got to set this up so we have diamonds as a reactant and graphite as a product. So I can literally just copy that first problem exactly as it is because diamonds are reactant in that one. I need to make graphite a uh, product, so I'm going to take the second and flip it. Now that I've got those, now that I've got those, I can realize that I'm completely mistaken. And this problem is actually more straightforward than this. This is another one where you can simply take the sum of the, su the, sum of the products and subtract it from the sum of the reactants to come up with your delta G. So in this case, it's the same as before. We find that delta G equals 3 kilojoules per mole. Notice that this is a positive value. And that's because this is, a not, this is not a spontaneous reaction. Diamonds don't naturally just decay into graphite. It's not like your mother's wedding ring is turning into pencil lead. And water doesn't naturally just decay into hydrogen peroxide. Otherwise, we'd all be dead. Now let's do a problem that's a little more AP related. We're asked to find delta H, delta S, and delta G using just the following data. So we're given a table. So again, we're going to be using all those big mama equations, the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So let's start with, oh, and we can do a little dance for joy because we are at standard conditions. So this is all going to work out nice and pretty. This temperature is given to us in Celsius. Let's get rid of that first. Let's change that to Kelvin. So 25 degrees Celsius is 298 Kelvin. So let's start with delta H. Again, it's products minus reactants. So we can go ahead and fill this in with our balanced uh, formula from above. When we do this, we can see that oxygens here, oxygen is an elemental compound, so we can get rid of that. That's going to equal zero. And if we look at the table, they even tell us, hey, oxygen is zero for delta H. 
So now all that's left to do is to plug in numbers for sulfur trioxide and sulfur dioxide. And we find that delta H equals negative 198 kilojoules per mole. We can figure out delta S the same way using the table. Products minus reactants. We plug in our balanced formula. However, this time we aren't going to be able to just get rid of oxygen because oxygen does have an entropy that goes with it because it still has those electrons floating around. So this isn't going to be as straightforward and easy as the last one. We actually have to plug some math in here. We plug all those values in. We find that delta S equals a negative 187 joules per mole Kelvin. So now we've got a value for delta S and delta H. We can now use that granddaddy equation, delta G equals delta T minus, del minus T delta S. So we plug in our value for delta H. We can plug in our temperature from above, 298. And we can plug in our delta S. Now if you look at this, this is not mathematically sound. We cannot subtract kilojoules from, we can't subtract joules from kilojoules, so this is not going to work out. We need to alter our units here. So I personally am a fan of getting bigger rather than getting smaller, so let's uh, divide this by a thousand to come up with kilojoules per mole Kelvin for our delta S. So when you do that, move decimal place forward three spaces you get negative 0 0.187 kilojoules per mole Kevin Calvin Kevin <laughs> now you can check to make sure your units cancel out Kelvin will cancel Kelvin our answer is going to be in kilojoules per mole which is what the units are for Delta G so we can go ahead and do this mathematically and we find that Delta G equals a negative 42, 142 kilojoules per mole, which means that this is a spontaneous reaction. I had hoped to fit all of the ways to calculate delta, eight, delta G on one video. However, I'm running out of time. So this is your brief intermission. And by brief, I mean wait for the next video. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do